Maxi is back. Um, uh, and we he came back as we split with the Pelicans um, and beat the Thunder. Maxi didn't play in that game against the Thunder. But um, since Maxi has returned, uh, he's taken on the bench role, which is kind of something we, we talked about uh, a couple weeks ago when Maxi did come back. Um, and Melton has stuck with the starters. Um, I know it's limited minutes with Maxi so far, and it's only I, trying to get him get him in back, get his bearings back. But what do we think about Maxi's play so far and this whole Maxi coming off the bench as we kind of get him reacclimated into playing again? Um, to me, it looks like he had a, oh, a significant injury. <laughs> I mean, you said you see the difference from where he was b b before the injury and where he is now. Um, so he's trying to work himself back into um, game shape and the position to, to feel and play the way he was pre-injury. So that, that's going to take time. I think this is just the way that they do it as far as limiting his minutes and limiting – his play until he's kind of full go per se. Um, so I think he's, he's looked good for the amount of time that he's missed. And, and I just think it's going to take some time to get to the point where he was this season. Like I said, pre-injured. Yeah. I mean, we, we definitely talked about um, for weeks and weeks, we talked about what a good idea would be to get him slowly acclimated using him on the bench and, which would actually be perfect for us because our bench scoring is on the weaker side. Um, and Melton fits so well with what the starters do with his skill set. Um, I even saw they rolled out a three guard lineup for a while yesterday, which worked really well. It was the Maxi Harden and uh, Melton with Tobias and, and Embiid, which uh, was great because you don't sacrifice any of the defense that you lose with, from Tucker to Melton, but you also get the offensive game with Melton, which is, which is great. So they, they may have found a new five success there for, uh, for the future, especially on who you depends on who you're playing a little bit too. You know, playing New Orleans, you can do that. Probably yeah, that's true. Bit. That's true. Well, New Orleans without Ingram, <laughs> yeah, maybe. That's so what I'm saying. Without they get even longer and bigger with him. Um, I thought he looked pretty good though. I, I mean, I, a little tentative, not totally himself, but that's to be expected with the kind of injury he had. And you know, when uh, Marcus and I were talking a couple weeks ago about you know, oh, let's get him back in. I was like, nah. With that kind of injury, I was like, the way he plays, give him more time because. He plays so hard, like he, he the, the the way he runs, and he's just like sprinting full speed and hard stops, and and it, it's almost like um not to say it is like him, but oh like Derek Rosish, how hard he drives to the rim and how fast he changes, um not the explosiveness, but the way he drives. So I was like, just give him time because I, I do not want him to re injure himself, and that 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 injury is scary. And actually, he did. Um, I read an article that he said how he was thinking about it in the uh, Pelicans, then first had the Pelicans game. He was thinking about his foot a lot as he was driving and it was on his mind a lot. And then slowly throughout the game in the second half, he kind of just put it in the back of his mind and just, he's like, I have to play fearless. I have to play fearless. That's my, that's my style. So I got to just do it. Um, and I think Harden even gave him some uh, words of wisdom was just like, take up a possession by possession. Um, your foot will come back to normal, but like, just, just take it easy on yourself and just keep playing your game moment by moment, possession by possession. Um, I was going to ask you, Eric, you know, you're no stranger to lower body injuries. Does that sound about right? I mean, were you, did it kind of consume your brain a little bit in the beginning of the game? It took you a game or two, or as you just played, you forgot about it. You got sucked into the game or. Well, I mean, I always felt like when, when I played from an injury with the injury or coming back from injury, that your focus is kind of better because you kind of focus on putting yourself in position to kind of do what you need to do. Um, you don't take a lot of chances. So you're, you're a little more conservative as far as your play. Um, and that's why I say it takes a little more time for him to get to that point where he was before because, and it's also, and that's just from him mentally and physically being able to do it. And it's also from the standpoint of the team. You don't want to kind of do too much. You want to kind of work your way back into it. So that all it takes time um, in order to get back to that point. And that's why I'm saying, like, it, it really didn't matter right now. It really does not matter if he's getting a certain amount of minutes, whether it's coming off the bench or starting. Like, those minutes are the same as far as how he feels physically. Now, from a team and impact standpoint, some guys bring you off the bench um, when you're coming back from an injury because it's quote unquote supposed to be easier. 
because you're playing more minutes against reserves. Um, so that's why you'll see more teams, even like Golden State did it with Steph Curry. Mm -hmm. And Clay. Um, yeah, you kind of like give them a chance to kind of break themselves, you know, back in to things, not playing against, you know, <laughs> CJ McCullough. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. But it's funny because you're also taking on when you're playing with other bench players, if you're Maxi, you're actually taking on more offensive responsibilities, though. Well, it depends on when you sub in. I mean, being That's a bench player doesn't mean that he's playing he, he, he's playing with James or um Joel. So one of those two are still being in the game. He's still playing with Tobias. So it's there's different ways that you can kind of not put as much on him mm -hmm. um, when he's in the game. I just think from the standpoint of starting and you can kind of fill him in and Mentally too. Remember, yeah, it's when I, I remember when I when they when I went out the lineup when we went to the finals when I, my ankle was broken, it was the thinking there was not starting me so I could finish games. Mm. That that was the importance of me being on a rotation to where I could come in later in the first quarter and finish the half. And then get a break and then go back in and then be more inclined to finish and play more of my minutes in the fourth quarter than the first quarter. Not be overplayed. Yes. Yeah, that makes sense. Because it was times where I didn't, you know, I didn't start, but then I would play the whole fourth quarter. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's that was kind of like Coach Brown kind of brought that to me. I, I wasn't a fan of it. I'm like, what difference does it make? You know? <laughs> I start, I start, right? I'm playing the same amount of minutes, what you know. Why change it? But that was the reason why. That was their reasoning why. And it made sense later on for you. You're like, oh, I get it now. Or are you Not still? Really. <laughs> that sort of makes sense for me. I'm just telling you the reasoning. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I didn't really look at it like, hey, this is what I need to do. I mean, it was at the time when it really happened, I think we were playing. So I was. I had surgery in December, so I had I was having like trouble with my ankle like the whole season and in the playoffs. But I officially rebroke it actually against Milwaukee. Mm -hmm. but yeah. It started to affect me before then, so it, it was to the point where like I was. It almost felt like it was broken before then, so I had like Achilles tendonitis. It was like really, really bad. That felt like worse than the break. Oh, man. Um, so when they did it, it was like, I think we we did it, and they were like, well, then you also, because we were playing Toronto, and they were like, well, you also don't have to guard Vince as much. <laughs> Great. So they sold that, too. Like, hey, you don't have to guard Vince as much. Because you probably have to guard him late in the game, so now you have to start on him. Mm. Which is you know, let Aaron and I'm like mm -hmm. that's a nice sales tactic for you. Yeah, I mean, we were already without George Lent, so it was I it yeah, was, you know, basically playing without two starters, but it worked out. I mean, Aaron was playing so well, it worked out. So, yeah. but yeah, it's it's tough, man. But every like the one thing I learned about injuries, and I want y'all to kind of understand this um, from a standpoint that everybody's body's different. How you respond to it, how you treat it, how you play from it, how you act. Like, it's, there's no way that I, the one thing I've learned is no way to say, okay, well, this happened to him. Yep. This is what he's supposed to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just, it is what it is. We'll see how, how it plays out. There's no uniform way at all. Yeah. You, you can just see on our team uh, how guys react differently. Joel tends to get very distracted with his injuries. They don't affect him a lot, but he gets distracted with them a lot. But okay. one's totally just in how you heal, how you heal, how you can perform with them. It's all different. There's no, no way that you can kind of put everybody. Even being sick, some guys. Yeah, it's just, you know. You couldn't tell a difference. Other guys just can't play. Some like, guys exactly. can't play with it. Some guys can. Like, it kind of it depends. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm There was a, uh, a footage of, of Joel talking to Curry uh, when we played Golden State and I don't know if it was legit or not, but they were saying he said to him, I I've been playing with your injury. <laughs> but I don't know if that's legit or not, but they said he said that to him after the game. <laughs> Shoulder problem. So it's just funny to hear, yeah. Um, well, I mean, 
you know, one thing what Tage and I were talking about the other day um, was regardless of, you know, if, if Melton, you know, stays in the starting lineup or comes off the bench, it, it, that acquisition of getting Melton was so big this offseason, not in the way he's played since Ma- Max has been out, but the fact that we can slowly get Maxie back into the offense just because how Melton's, I mean, he's been so good for us. And crazy. I still, I still wonder why the Grizzlies gave him up for what. Yeah, what I mean, did. I think with, with, with Melton, it's a lot of, he is, you easily put him, put him in there because he can do all the stuff defensively and offensively he can make shots and make plays, but he's not needed to be a playmaker, which means yeah. he's uh, more of a, Spot up shooter, three and D, really, and that's what you know is working because he's defending, playing well, but he's also shooting the ball well from three. Yes, yeah. he is, and that's been a big, big deal. Yeah, it's huge. Yeah, it was crazy. That was man, that, that's one of the best. I don't know which trade was better, to be honest. You looking in retrospect, the uh, Curry deal or the Melton deal at this point, because. Um, looking back on both of those, they were both so good, and the, both players, I think, exceeded what I was expecting from them. Oh, you're talking about the, the original Seth Curry trade? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, like it's like man, I just don't even. It's they're both so good. Um, Melton's been to if he was a free agent this year, dude, he would be getting paid. <laughs> I mean, he'll probably get paid after his next contract anyway. But like, if he was an upcoming free agent, mm. my goodness, dude, some team would throw like a lot of money at him at this point. Yeah. It's so, two, two, we have them for two years, correct? I think we have them for two more years, yeah. We'll, we'll enjoy those two years. <laughs> yeah, we yes, we will. We will enjoy that. <laughs>